This is K8BYP with the first video in a series of N, and I don't know how many N's going to be. But going from basic electricity out to advanced antenna theory. It is a terribly unfortunate mistake that, that all, almost all electrical and electronic education outside of the university level starts with components. That's an awful mistake because that leads to not understanding the fundamental quantities and those fundamental invisible quantities that are not in components are how transmission lines and antennas work. So without this basic stuff it is impossible to understand antennas and generally the hobbyist and the engineer are left guessing at it and the guessing is universally wrong. The basis of the electrical world Electrical physics is the atom, and the electron is a subatomic particle. It's important to distinguish this, the electron and the associated fields, from the components, because the the basic principles are how the components work. It's it's not enough to say an inductor is is ten microhenry. What what's a microhenry? Well, that means nothing without an understanding of the fields, and that means nothing with regard to circuit design and analysis without understanding the interaction between the fields and the quantity or quantities that, that initially generated them or vice versa. So this is going to start with the, the fundamentals with the electron and work up through in this first video up through the interaction between the inductor and capacitor and their fields. In the science of electricity and in electronics, the most fundamental particle is the electron. This little kernel of popcorn is a nucleus of an atom, protons and neutrons, and around it are seven close-in electrons and one far-out electron. That's so 70s. The far-out electron is referred to as being the valence, the outer electron. And those are loosely held. The further away the planets are from the sun, the less effect the sun's gravitational field has on the planet. It would be easier to move the same mass of planet away from the sun out by Pluto than it would be here to move the same mass at the orbit of the Earth because the Earth's orbit is closer. That's a crude but accurate definition. An electron is a particle. It has mass. It's I think of it as a little grain of sand orbiting this atom at extreme speed. That electron is held to the atom, and this is a critical point. That atom is defined by the number of protons, the number of neutrons, and the number of electrons. If it is missing any of those, it is no, no longer that atom. It might be an isotope. In nuclear physics and nuclear reactions, a neutron hitting that atom can split it apart and make it into something else, or just pieces of atoms floating around. Electrical current is a result of these valence electrons jumping or being pushed actually between atoms. The old analogy of a tube full of ping pong balls is reasonably close fill a horizontal pipe full of ping pong balls until it's completely full. Just assume that they're, they're magnetized together and they don't just fall out of the pipe. But push one ping pong ball in one end and instantaneously it seems one comes out the other end. Why? Because the pipe's full. It can't handle anymore. A bunch of these atoms in line are full of electrons. And they don't want one more or one less. So if one is forced in from the left, then one's forced out to the right, and on and on and on. Very important to also understand the basic physical principles of in electricity and electronics, largely the conservation of energy. We don't really play with mass in electronics. We don't go changing mass of stuff. But the conservation of energy is absolutely critical. Kind of think of it as that atom wants to keep what amount of energy it has. 
That's crude, but it works. Material property. Resistivity. Greek letter rho. That's not a P. That's a Greek letter rho. Resistivity is a property of a material which contains atoms. Everything contains atoms. But the property of that material in that it wants to hold on to those electrons. We say there are conductors. We say there are insulators. Everything will conduct current. Everything is a is resistive. It's a matter of magnitude. We say copper wire is a good conductor. We say plastic is a poor conductor. But put enough voltage on plastic, it'll conduct like a banshee. Resistivity is a property of a material, not a shape, but the material material in that shape and not a component but the material in that component that says that a certain amount of that material a cubic centimeter of a material with a certain resistivity will have a certain resistance this long rectangular block with a dot there to identify the center to give us a perspective of looking in this end has more material in this length distance than it has in a radial distance compared to this block. So this one has a higher resistance than this one, even though they're made of exactly the same material. Maybe, maybe this block was just reshaped into that and the same material. But assuming an imaginary center line and a stream of electrons going through that, the electrons will also try to go through every other parallel relatively speaking, parallel path to get from this end to the other if there's a voltage or a potential applied across the ends of this bar. This one has less resistance because it's bigger and it's shorter. The path that the electrons take through is shorter, so if there is resistivity or resistance in the material, it has less of that to go through. Uh, think of it as, as people running through a shopping mall and then having to go up an escalator. The escalator is a restriction. It's resistive. It resists traffic flow. We, we, we might normally start electronics and electricity by discussing resistance, and that's a terrible, terrible mistake because we don't really understand from that anything but a resistor. Well, um, carbon fiber conducts electricity. It could be used as, as either a conductor or a resistor, but if we only understand resistors, then we don't understand what carbon fiber might be used for. Concepts of current and voltage. Ohm's law, we all know this, the relationship among volts, ampere, and resistance. Amperes are these electrons flowing, going somewhere. An amp is defined as some huge number of electrons going past a point in one second. It's something, I think it's something to the times 10 to the 18th power electrons. Immense number. Current flow is then defined by a voltage or a potential or a force put across the ends of our resistive block. Made of a resistive material, therefore that is a resistance or a resistor. Resistor is a noun. It has an OR nominative ending. Resistance is its property. Put a voltage across the end, a current will flow in proportion to the voltage applied and the resistance of this material and the shape. Now, electrons have fields associated with them. Electrons are also associated with photons, but that's in the quantum world. We don't go there in electronics. Not directly. Yes, there are photosensors, but that's a conversion between photons and, elect and electrons. A voltage, a potential on a wire, assuming that we don't care about the resistance or resistivity, exudes radial field vectors from that wire perpendicular. This is a length, and each of these lines is perpendicular or at right angles to the line along which it contacts. 
these vectors try to reach out to infinity. They're radial from the wire. They're all up and down along this. This is only just showing one, one instant slice of them along this wire. If, if I drew in all the, all the radial vectors, you wouldn't be able to see the wire. It would just be a blob on the page. Those can be static or delta dynamic changing. Now that's not because the potential is placed across each end necessarily. It's because there's a potential there with regard to something else out here in space. Jumping ahead in a capacitor or a transmission line, if this is a center conductor and there's an outer shield of a say a solid copper ring then these lines will extend out to that ring but we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves that's with a voltage applied and voltages can be static if we remember uh, walking across a room towards a Christmas tree with the plastic icicles and reaching our hand out and reaching the hand out towards the tree and at some point the icicle starts to move get close enough that sickle will stand straight out and reach over and touch the finger. That's an example of, of electrostatics and the fact that these lines exert a physical force. And that was one of the things that, uh, was it Faraday? His uh, foil in the vacuum jar experiment proved he was able to move, use electrostatic force to move the foil, I think is what, what that experiment was. If there's a potential at each end and there's a current flow, then to balance the forces of these radial lines, there has to be a magnetic field. The electrical field lines extend from this surface radially out, also associated with a magnetic force that curls around, wraps around, according to the right hand rule. It's important to note that in electricity and electronics, the E field, this is known as an E field, or E field vectors, the E field can be static, but the I, the magnetic, the I cannot. The I, the magnetic field is because something's changing. And this is the basis of our antennas. And on a sort of a side note, there has been an absolutely fascinating article published by the IEEE Antennas and Propagation Society last month. Maxwell's equation is derived from simple relativity transformation principles. It just takes Maxwell's laws and turns them on their ear and redefines them. It says that the, um, the magnetic field is necessary in the, in the quantum realm to balance the um, to balance the forces out, and it's a it really really magnifies what Maxwell's equations mean. And by the way, that's in December 20, 2021, IEEE Antennas and Propagation magazine. And for the sci fi buff, we see the paragraph heading Need for a New Force Field, and down below, representations of, of forces with charges applied on a imaginary cube. So if you have access to this, it's an absolutely fascinating read. I'm at 14 minutes, so I have to stop this for video one. Next up will be video number two.